I've got the recipe for you. This dip is just amazing. It just melts in the mouth. Bon Appetit! Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, I always share this with you this time of year, but it's my birthday. And what better way to celebrate than with all of you and also with Okra Magazine, one of our sponsors. And we're doing three recipes today with folks that are being featured in their magazine and wonderful recipes to go with it. So we're gonna start with a pluck it cake. One of my all time favorites It's actually part of a very interesting story that's gonna be in the magazine. Then we're going to move into a creamy polenta pancetta and fried egg with arugula that is a fabulous entree and then finally how about big mama's apple cake so scrumptious and this recipe is one of the things about this magazine that's interesting because this features all southern comfort foods ideas and stories so why don't we get started with the plucket cake you know this recipe is part of the very vera cooking camp and this month in okra magazine our creative director emily yates story about our camping program is being featured in the magazine i'm so excited for her so proud for her but this recipe has been part of our camp history forever but it's been part of my family for as long as I can remember. So it uses five basic ingredients. So it's very easy to make with children and it's, there's no s knives or anything like that that's being used so it's very easy to make. So it starts with Pillsbury biscuits. And one of the things that's interesting about old recipes is sometimes the size of um, containers change or the quantity changes in the way things are packaged. So back in the day when I made this, you used four cans of the buttermilk Pillsbury Pillsbury biscuits. Be sure to buy the buttermilk flavor. But now with their new packaging, you only use three. So what I've gone ahead and done, I unwrap the biscuit, you just plop it on the counter and pop it open. And then once you've got it all spread out, the children can use children's scissors to cut the biscuits into six pieces. And you get all of that spread out. Then once you've got that cut, you're going to get started on the sauce that goes in it. So why don't we do that now? So I've got butter melting on, in my saucepan, and that's the nice thing about this Wolf induction cooktop is that it maintains a pure simmer the whole time. So I'm gonna add to that dark brown sugar. And let me emphasize to use the dark brown, and you're keeping this on a medium heat. The other thing that is so great about this is the cinnamon and the nutmeg. So the aroma in your house is going to be fantastic. And this is the wonderful gooey sauce that's gonna just go penetrate all of those biscuits. I just love it. All right, so I'm gonna let that cook down for just a few minutes come back over here. So I'm sure you're thinking, Vera, have you lost your mind? That pan is ridiculous looking. Well, this is the pan that I've been using forever. And obviously you can see that it is worn, used, seasoned great, it's just wonderful. So what I did was I've gone ahead and taken one and a half cans of the biscuits, um, cut them into those sizes, and then you wanna put it in the pan with the point side up. So now I'm gonna take half of this wonderful sauce that we've created, and I'm just going to pour it right over those biscuits. And the reason you do the point side up is because that creates crevices. So what makes this wonderful and why it's called pluck it cake is it once it's inverted and on the serving platter, you literally walk up and pluck the pieces out of it. You don't even have to have a serving knife to serve this. All right, so get a good about half of this mixture. Like I said, it's just gonna seep through. And then we're gonna start layering the next little bit. All right, so as I said, this has been a tradition in my family we always have it on Christmas 
and Thanksgiving. And now all of my older children send pictures on those holidays of the ones that they are taking out of their oven. So it's just a really special recipe, a great article about our camping program. So when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on that creamy polenta. This is gonna go into a 300 degree oven for about 50 to 55 minutes. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody, if you're just joining us, we are celebrating the 10th issue of Okra Magazine. They are just a great partner with us and we love to do these shows that feature stories and people that they represent in their magazine. So during the break, I got the rest of the Plucket Cake done, put that second layer on, added that wonderful brown sugar sauce with the butter to go on top and now it's in the oven, it's gonna bake for a little bit, it's just gonna puff up so pretty. But one of the other things I wanted to point out about recipes is that my recipe originally said one stick of oleo. Now how far does that take you back for those of you that even know what oleo is? So we just really had fun with these old recipes. So this recipe today that we're getting ready to do is a creamy polenta. It has pancetta, it has fried eggs, it has arugula, it is absolutely delicious. And this is a recipe from one of the chefs that's being featured in the magazine. His name is Chef Cole Ellis. And he encapsulates Southern cuisine. He is the lead chef at Bar Fontaine, and that is inside the Cotton House, which is in Cleveland, Mississippi. So if you're looking for a best kept secret sort of destination that's really cool, I highly recommend that you look into that. I can't wait to go myself. So to get started with this recipe, we did a little bit during the break. We went ahead and got our liquids, which were milk and water, boiling in the saucepan. Once that was to a nice good boil, I added in um, my polenta and my cornmeal. So that's why you've got this beautiful yellow texture to this. It's just perfect. And then it cooked for about 12 to 15 minutes and just look at that wonderful creamy consistency. So now I'm going to take it off the heat and again I can just sit this directly on my star granite countertops which makes it so easy. Just perfect for that. Alright so now this is where all the fun begins because we're going to add to this three tablespoons of butter and some olive oil. So you might think it looks a little thick right now, but by the time we get all of this added, it is going to be scrumptious. And you know, I've never even thought about putting olive oil, you know, in my polenta or, you know, my grits for that matter, but the flavor and what it adds to the creaminess of it is just terrific. All right, it gets better, y'all. Now we're going to add March Sapone cheese. and Parmesan cheese. So, I mean, this is going to be served, like I said today, with pancetta. And what I did there was I went ahead and cut it up into the little cubes, put it in my cast iron skillet, and you just want to fry the heck out of it until it's got a nice, crispy corners on all of it. And then just drain it on a paper towel, and that's going to be part of the presentation. Then you leave the drippings in the pan because that's what we're going to fry our egg in. All right, let's add in just a little bit of salt because you can't take that away. And with the Parmesan and the pancetta, you don't want to put too much, but you want to put plenty of pepper in this. All right, so let me turn this cast iron skillet back up just a little bit because we're going to get ready to fry the egg. Just look at that. I mean, I'm telling you, I could eat this all by itself. Even with a piece of fried trout or something on the top of it, it would be amazing. All right, so this cute little thing, you could pick up at Bed Bath & Beyond with your coupon. This is what we use to fry eggs so that we know that they're gonna be the right shape. But you know, there's nothing wrong with an egg that's kind of going all over the place too. All right, so, as I said in the presentation at the end, what goes with this is arugula that you have dressed with the, some freshly squeezed lemon juice. That's gonna be a beautiful plate presentation. All right, let's get this egg cracked. 
turn that heat down just a little bit. See, look at there. So we're gonna do one in that, and then let's do one kind of crazy over here. And the secret is that you do it, you let it fall slowly. And actually, some of that's kind of come away from that. But what we're trying to do here, and my assistant that helps me get ready for this show every week, Corey, said, you know, my grandmother taught me to always put fresh cracked pepper on an egg so it'll cook right. You see, that might be a wives tale, but it really works. All right, so that's gonna crisp up. And then when we plate this, it's gonna be a layer of the polenta. We're gonna put the arugula. We're gonna put the pancetta. We're gonna squeeze that lemon juice over the top and then lay that fried egg on top. You don't wanna miss that. Okay, in Vera's Corner today, I'm gonna to give you some helpful kitchen tips that'll get make things easier for you. And then we're gonna get started on Mama's, Big Mama's apple cake. So come back while I cook these eggs. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund, go get it. Sometimes I come across tips for the kitchen that give me a real aha moment. Today I'm gonna to share some of my recent favorites to make your time in the kitchen more enjoyable. If you have leftover onion, celery, or carrots from a recipe or crudite tray, dice the remainder and freeze in separate freezer bags. Label each with the date, contents, and amount. Then they're ready to go the next time you need diced veggies for soup or sauce. For a quick way to pit cherries for baking, place a number 12 pastry tip on a plate and press the cherries stem side down onto the narrow end of the tip. The pit will rest in the hole of the pastry tip. When opening a salt canister for the first time, use the edge of a knife to lift the metal edge up slightly, giving you easier access every time you use the container. Finally, an easy way to travel with cheesecake. Place the spring-form pan around the cheesecake on its serving platter with the pan in the open position. Then cover the top with foil or plastic wrap. This keeps the top from being ruined by sticking to the cover. Use these tips to make your culinary life a little bit easier. Welcome back everybody and I hope you enjoyed those tips in Vera's Corner today. And you know what, the aromas in this kitchen are amazing between cooking pancetta and having the cinnamon and the nutmeg from the Pluck It cake. Now we've got all of these wonderful ingredients that are gonna be Big Mama's apple cake. So you know, the South is noted for its wonderful ingredients its heritage of passing down recipes. And Tom Brown, who is being featured in this issue of Oak Ridge Magazine, is a North Carolina apple connoisseur. His mission is to find orchards that have some of the old, old varieties of apples and reintroduce those in many, many ways. And so one of the ways that he's keeping that interest in these old varieties of apples is a recipe that's actually been passed down by his wife's grandmother. So Big Mama's apple cake is very reminiscent in his family, but it's also a cake that is now gonna be one of my go-to favorites. So what we've done in advance is I went ahead and peeled my apples, got those nicely diced up, and those are ready to go. So in my mixer, I'm going to combine oil, three whole eggs and sugar. And we'll just let that start to get mixed together while we get started on the dry ingredients part of this. All right, so in my old school sifter, which I still absolutely love, I have my all-purpose flour. Now I'm gonna add in salt, baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon, and this time allspice, which is another really nice um, flavoring with apples and with the vanilla. 
So what we're gonna do here is just sift this, finely sift it. And you know, this incorporates with that much leavening with the soda and the baking powder, and now the motion of sifting these ingredients. You just are gonna really have a beautiful rise in this cake. You'll see when I get to the end that this batter is really thick. And so the final product actually resembles more of like a really dense strudel cake. It has a nice crispy crust on the outside. You could use it for a coffee cake or even a wonderful dessert. My grandchildren make quite the mess with this when they're helping me sift. <laughs> but what else is new? All right, I've also prepared my tube pan with my Baker's Joy. All right, so that's about ready. So now I'm gonna start transferring the flour to the mixer. So Tom, as I said, is a connoisseur of apples. And just finding these orchards that have some of these varieties, as a matter of fact, Tom was lucky enough to land the cover of this issue and just looking at you know how unusual looking the outside of those apples are is just great and it just has a marvelous time going all over the state of North Carolina looking for these varieties of apples and the different orchards that they're in so his story is really unique it's the cover story in the issue and is just very very interesting all right the batter is really thick now. I'll get the rest of this flour in. So I wasn't joking when I said it doesn't resemble most of your cake batters. So let me just put the vanilla extract in. Loosens it up just a little bit. Put a quick spin on that. All right, so now we're gonna fold in the apples and the pecans. So, like I said, these southern ingredients are what make these recipes, for my sake, very, very good and very reminiscent of what you would expect in the South. All right, so let's get over here. Now, the folding process is just really unique and, and good for this recipe. So here's all my apples and my pecans. So you want to go all the way to the bottom with that spatula. Gosh, I mean, just look at the chunkiness of this. So like I said, this is almost, you know, strudel-like because of how thick and chunky these ingredients are. You just want to make sure you've incorporated it really well. Put this into your prepared pan, and then that's gonna go into a 350 degree oven for an hour. So because the batter is so thick, it's gonna take that long to cook it. All right, so when we come back from the break, we're gonna lay all of this out, do a little presentation, and you'll see how this Southern meal comes to life in just a few minutes. What a way to spend my birthday than with all of you and with all of this great Southern food and just stories and Okra Magazine. It's just been a great day. I certainly hope that you will either subscribe to Okra Magazine or pick one up at the grocery store because these recipes and these stories are phenomenal. So let's go back through what we did today and I'll start right here with Big Mama's Cake. We did a great icing and actually this is my cream cheese icing. Got it kind of loose and just swizzled that all over the top. It's really, really moist, just gonna be delicious. And then the Pluckett cake is just amazing. Inverting that onto the pan and just lifting that pan up and you're just holding your breath that it's gonna be perfect. And it's perfect every time. So that's another recipe I want you to try. So now let's plate the polenta dish. And it's just the absolute perfect consistency. You see that cheese that's throughout with the way that that is just nice and moist there and really, really wonderful. All right, so now we're going to put the arugula on the side. So what I've done there is I went ahead and juiced 
a couple of lemons and you just want to pour just enough on there just to give it a little bit of tartness. And that's going to be kind of like the side green on this plate. Kind of put it all the way around on one side. Now we're going to take the pancetta, put it right in the middle, and maybe kind of drizzle some of that over on the side. Now we've got to put that fried egg. And look at the difference, the one I made with the circle and the other one. All right, so we're going to put the pretty one right in the center. So we've got a beautiful presentation today, wonderful Southern recipes, great things to talk about. And just, I hope you'll go to our website to get these recipes. But remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. And I hope you'll come back next week. I'm gonna be in Savannah, Georgia, telling you more about delicious Southern sweets. To book Vera as a speaker for your next event, email info at veryvera.com.